Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Answers from the Lab, where we share Mayo Clinic knowledge and advancements on the state of testing and science from laboratory leaders and the people who are making it happen behind the scenes. I'm Dr. Bobby Pritt, Interim Chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. With me today is Dr. Bill Maurice, the President and CEO of Mayo Clinic Laboratories. This is our weekly discussion with Dr. Maurice, in which we learn about updates in the field of laboratory medicine and pathology. Hi, Bill. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Bobby. How are you? I am doing excellent. I am in Hawaii at the moment, uh, attending a Mayo Clinic conference that I co-direct every year with Dr. Abinash Burke, and it's Infectious Disease Practice Updates. So it's a really nice example of how the lab partners with uh, other members of the practice, like infectious diseases. We hold this joint conference every year. Yeah, well, it's cool. I mean, I, I did one also in a beautiful setting at one time it was in New Zealand. It was around myeloma, uh, oh, where wow. we were actually invited to, it's a course that the hematologist put on every year. And I consider myself a hematologist because I'm a hematopathologist and I'm with our integrated practice. And there was a government official who who was diagnosed with myeloma. They were so impressed with the care they received at Mayo that they wanted this integrated con and the integrated approach that they wanted this the you know this conference to be held held in in New Zealand. So that was cool. Oh wow, um, that's neat. So yeah, yeah. So what's these in the opportunities so where we you know we're part of the practice and it's just so great. It just shows how we partner with our colleagues and it's you know we're an integral part of the practice and our colleagues you know, they look to us for uh, help in making the right diagnosis. Yeah, you can't treat what you don't know, right? Yeah. I'm sure it's it, it's an interesting um, conference too, because now there's, I mean, the whole world has been so transfixed by COVID and certainly the infectious disease yeah. community is taking the lead on that. So I'm sure there's other things out there that you guys are talking about <laughs> and uh, and that are even happening as we speak. Oh, yes, there is always something in the infectious diseases realm. And uh, some of our listeners may have heard about norovirus. Um, we are in the midst of a few different outbreaks of norovirus, which sometimes is called the stomach flu or stomach bug, but it's mm. not related to influenza at all. Um, it's just this really terrible uh, infection where you get diarrhea, vomiting, usually lasts a few days, and then most people get better on their own. But boy, those few days can be pretty miserable. Yeah, so is this is it unusual to have an outbreak? No, actually, this is the peak, um, November through April. And if you look at the uh, list of infections that the CDC publishes, there's always this wintertime peak. And um, right now, it looks like we have outbreaks linked to raw oysters, possibly from Texas, some contaminated oysters that may have come from Korea. And then there's also two outbreaks going on in elementary schools. So really important to wash your hands well and not get norovirus. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right? But it's it's uh, not um, it's not specific to shellfish then, correct? Correct. It actually, you can get it from an, it's a foodborne illness and it can be spread uh, very easily from person to person as well. And it's actually the number one cause of foodborne illness in the United States. So 58% of the foodborne illnesses each year are due to norovirus. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing that it's self-limited then, but you know, it, it does make me think I got, I, I had uh, some raw shellfish. I grew up on Long Island where eating raw shellfish was definitely a thing, but there's, there's other uh, things that you can catch that can have similar symptoms, right? Because I, I had, I had something different. So I guess the question is, um, you know, when would someone need to get tested? Because if this is self-limited, you probably don't need a test for it. I mean, I've had the stomach, probably a lot of our listeners had stomach flu, as mm -hmm. we call it, air quotes, and and not mm -hmm. gotten tested. So, so you know, when when do you think about getting tested for the stomach flu or a, a GI illness? Yeah, that's a great question, Bill, because you're right. Most people that get some sort of stomach bug, um, they feel miserable for a few days, but then most people will get better on their own. And so you really don't need testing. In fact, most of these don't have treatment either. Um, but the times you'd want to get tested would be if you've had 
symptoms for more than seven days, then you worry that it's something that really could stick around and needs treatment. Or if you are at risk of severe disease, for example, if you are someone who's immunocompromised, um, have pre-existing conditions, um, or if you are so sick that you have severe signs and symptoms, um, perhaps you have dehydration so bad that you have to go to the emergency room for um, rehydration or severe cramping, bloody diarrhea. Those would be signs that testing is indicated. Got it. Yeah. And I think that, that of course, that raises to mind the question. And I knew I, I knew to get tested because of having gone to medical school. And I knew there are certain illnesses you can get from raw shellfish like Vibrio, which is what I have, Vibrio cholera. So, I mean, but there's a lot of different things that can cause GI symptoms, infectious causes of GI symptoms, some of which are treatable and some of which are not. So how do you, what, I mean, if someone's out there saying, what, you know, what do I tell the doctor? What kind of test do I need if it can be so many different things? Yeah, that's a great point. So first of all, I think uh, for those of um, our audience listening today, I'd say if it's just a couple of days you've had symptoms, tough it out unless you are getting really ill. Um, but yes, there comes this point where your symptoms are so severe or you have risk factors, you should go to your physician. Of course, if you can't keep anything down and you're at risk of dehydration, that would be a reason. Um, and then there are a number of tests that the physician can order. So if you are in the midst of a norovirus outbreak, like we are right now, we do have a specific norovirus PCR. And um, that is very helpful, especially in outbreaks when you have people that are at risk for severe disease or have had it for quite a while. Um, but if you, to get to your point of, well, there's a lot of other things that can cause these, you know, stomach flu, stomach bugs. Um, if, if there's some question about what that could be, what someone has, then we would recommend a panel test. And we have a multiplex panel. It actually detects 22 different pathogens, everything from Vibrio, which you said you had, um, to norovirus, to even some parasites. Again, though, it's not the kind of test that you would do on everyone. It's really uh, based on how long they've had, sim someone's had symptoms or how bad their symptoms are, or if they're at risk for really severe disease. So we've actually, because it's complex, we've worked with our colleagues in infectious diseases and gastroenterology, and we've created algorithms for when to use these tests. Interesting. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because it's, uh, yeah, that we always have to have an eye on using tests when it's most appropriate. You know, we say the right test for the right patient at the right time. So I guess the the, the take home messages are here. Um, if it's self-limited and you're, you know, you're, you're not going to, your health is okay. You don't have an underlying risk factor. You're not to the point where you can't keep down fluids and are getting dehydrated because you have to remember both GI illnesses, the diarrhea and the vomiting, both are fluid loss and electrolyte loss. It can be dangerous. Then, you, you know, um, you don't necessarily need to go get testing or go to the ER if you don't have those things. But the other flip side of that is you use the term tough it out. Um, a lot of these outbreaks are institutional. I mean, one person goes in and they can spread it to a lot of other people. So if you're having these symptoms, um, it really is best to, to, and now we should be, you know, used to social distancing and, and, you know, isolation or quarantining yourself, basically not going out to work to quote tough it out if yeah. you're having these symptoms. I think that's so important. And we've learned that during the pandemic. I think we always knew it wasn't a good idea to go to work sick, but I think we've realized that the ability to spread whatever you have to other people is such that you really should stay home and don't go in and just tough it out. It's not a badge of honor to go to work when you're having explosive uh, watery diarrhea every other you know, 15 minutes or so. And especially if you are a food handler, you should not go to work. And the CDC has guidelines on this. Really, you should be out for the entire time that you have symptoms, especially with norovirus, because it is so easy to spread. The infectious dose is really low. You only need 10 to 100 viral particles. And, and here's some facts for you, Bill. You know, I like these facts. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> norovirus is shed in the feces at a level of 10 million viral particles per gram of stool. Oh. So getting wow. 10 or 100 viral particles, that's uh, pretty easy to do. Um, another 
fun fact is one projectile vomiting incident can include up to 30 million viral particles, and that can get all over surfaces, as you can imagine. So really, if someone is symptomatic and they have diarrhea, vomiting, stay home, stay away from other people. Also, just wash your hands really, really well and decontaminate surfaces that have been contaminated. You don't want to pass this on to other people. Yeah, it does. <laughs> certainly not. Well, I guess those were fun as an operative word. I guess we, we do like those facts. That's why you're always fun to talk to. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and you're traveling. So safe travels. I hope that uh, norovirus or no other uh, infectious pathogen makes it, you know, ironically to an infectious disease uh, uh, summit meeting. So, uh, and uh, <laughs> we'll talk to you next week, I guess. Thanks, Bill. Sounds good. Thank you so much for tuning in to Answers from the Lab. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to tune in every Thursday and every other Tuesday.